and welcome back to the course. In this lesson, I want to show you and explore with you the different type of data or columns that you can use with StackBy. And StackBy has more than 30 or approximately 30 type of different columns that you can use not only to capture the data, but also to uh, visualize it, make it highly visual, so it will be easier for you to process different type of information and data as you work and use the app on a daily basis. It, st it, can, it starts with different colors, so for example, you can have different colors to represent different values, so it will be easier uh, for you to read, like deals probability, uh, value in terms of money, customer rating, and so on and so forth. So that's one option. And also, for example, if you have tasks that are done or not, you can simply uh, show it on the screen very easy um, and highly visual with just check marks. So we will explore all these different options through this lesson. Some of the columns are a bit more complex, and these are linked or lookup columns. These are basically columns that link information from one table, for example, the contacts table here, to a different table such as the task. So this is a more complex setup, and I will show it to you in the next lesson once you're already familiar with basic data entry and column types. Uh, in StackBy. So the first table that I would like to explore and show you is the company's table. So basically if you're looking at a CRM, a company or an account is uh, the main object in the hierarchy when you look at customer accounts in general. Because you may, you may have multiple contacts per one company, so a company account will be the highest uh, level highest tier of information that holds multiple accounts so with the uh, small business CRM template that we used we already have a table for companies or accounts and we have a company name and this table is probably the most sorry this column is probably the most common one uh, in stack by and the one that you will most commonly use pretty much with all of the apps and this is the short text column. This is a great place to enter a single line of text, okay, to uh, identify customer name, project name, task title, and so on, right? And this is the most popular column that you will use. The second column is, um, as it called, is it referred to here as industry, is a different type that's called single selection. So with single selection columns, we predefine a list of possible values. For example, software, media, automobiles, finance, electrical, textile, and so on and so forth. Okay, And this allows us, as we enter the information, instead of typing it in each and every time, which also leaves a place for human errors and typos. Okay, For example, like we have here, here there is a typo. It's not media like this. It's me, the uh, like that, okay? And then, for example, if I enter and I do a typo, then it's it gets more complicated to filter or to sort by different values if there are typos. So when we create a single option column, we create in advance the different type of values that we want to store. And when we want to add a new item to the list, simply go here when you see the option add list item and let's say real estate because real estate is not currently a valid solution to choose from so once we add the real estate here we click on the plus icon here to the side and then real estate is added to the list we can choose between colored options or not if you remember then I previously said that we can use colors to visualize the, the data that we enter to make our work easier. Once we're familiar with the um, color palette and the matrix of colors that we use, it's easy for us to identify the different values uh, very quickly. Okay, for example, if you do uh, risk analysis matrix, then it's super easy to see the information based on colors. So we can toggle color options 
on and off we can click on the link here to uh, set and arrange the different values on the list in um, alphabetic order and we can also choose the different value now when we add a new row then the default value will be, will be applied to the column right so for example for industry that may not be needed but if you create a new company account and you want to you want to mention if this um, account already has all the information uh, for billings on or, or transactions then in most cases as as you open the account you still have some paperwork to do then maybe you would like to say that you know the account stage is set up or seed or due diligence or something and not fully activated for business so you have the option to really specify a default value here and of course we need to click on apply to save the modifications and now if I go to industry so I have real estate and it wasn't available before but now because we've added it to the list then it is possible so please it's the same um, the same column type so I won't go into the details okay but it's the same uh, column type is single option website um, here it's referenced as a short text but there's also the option within stack by to choose a URL column type and a URL column type will basically uh, contain and will allow you to record any valid URL and you can simply type the URL and have it visible here as a link. Now, uh, one thing that is important to note is that we can change column type as long as the information and the data is valid. So website right now is a short text type, but I can switch to your, the URL and click on apply. And I'm gonna uh, see this message that uh, ask me to confirm because there is possible data loss but here there will be no data loss so I will simply click on yes and you can see that Stagby automatically adds the HTTP at the beginning and now this is a link the difference is that any valid URL that you will place here in this column or any text that you will place in this column will be converted to a link so as soon as someone will click on the text here it will open up as a link so this allows you for example to also include uh, deep links to whatsapp or application or uh, something that's more complex than just a website URL contacts and deals are um, linked columns to other tables I'm just quickly gonna mention that this allows you to save time and instead of recording the information multiple times or in a ma manual way to maintain relationships between companies accounts and deals this is a specific column type that stack by um, is providing to us to keep the relationship and tracking between different tables in our database we'll get more to that and more specifics into that later now if we go to contacts then we can see some additional uh, column type so an email we have an email type so again here you can see that this was set up as purely as a short text field but I can go and I can change this into email right so the thing here to know is with an email um, type email column type you can only store one email address per row so for example here since this is a text I can click anywhere on the sorry anywhere in the in the column and I can simply add space and add another email address and it will be fine because this is purely text column right but if if I will go on right now and I will change this to email okay then you will see that I will have a problem here because then all of the text here everything here has been modified to a single address so just keep that in mind that you're not able to store one more than one email address in a column 
or in a field from email column type. And so with any CRM, what we would like to do basically is to track uh, the progress of deals and tasks. So the deal table here, the deals table here allows us to track different deals that are related to companies, to contacts, to track the deal stage, right? And then we have a close date, which is a date and time, okay, type of a column. And when we have a date and time type of a column, we can also specify the different format for the column. And we have the option to show the time, okay? Then we will be, we also, if I add the time to this column, then you will see that I have the option to add the time here. So when I modified the column, then I also have the option to modify the time here to the right hand side. So with, with deal closure, this is usually, the time is usually not that important. So we can just uh, remove it and then the time section is removed from the calendar. So these are the options that are available to us when we work with uh, date or data t and, and time type of columns. Number of users for that deal or company is basically a number based column. So with numbers, we have the option to choose if this is a decimal, a number, a currency or a percentage format okay so if I change the uh, the number from decimal to percentage then you will see that the way that the information is shown on the screen is also modified right and then we have the option to choose pre precision and how many numbers we have uh, past the decimal dot when we enter the information and we also have the option to allow or disallow negative values Okay, when we enter the information, and we'll talk more about formatted value uh, in future lessons in this course, right? The price per user is a is again it's a number based column, it's just from type of or format of currency. Okay, so instead of choosing decimal or percentage, it's just currency, right? And the total ARR. You can see here by the icon is a formula based. So we can use tech by to actually uh, run formula it's based to, you know, Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. So we can simply type the um, uh, the formula that we would like to to run and have stack by calculate for us and have the information visible here in the column. Lastly, we can uh, provide with ourselves an easy way and easy uh, method for let's say tracking the close probability so we can add a column and let's call this probability and this is probability for closure and here we can add a column from uh, from the rating type So let's say that with a rating type, I'm going to choose the smiling face to um, give us the indicator, or give me the indicator of, of how probable it is for me to actually close this deal. And I'm going to use green as the indicator and allow, I can choose how many smileys do I want to have on, I mean, in, in this column as indicators, I'm going to stick with five, right? And then I'm going to click on apply. So now let's say that I have for this deal, the probability is five out of five. And then for the second deal is three and then four and then two and one and a two. And then again, five and a five and a four and a three and three. And this allows us to really view on the screen in highly visual ways the probability to close a specific deal and by the way this field acts like any other with um, in terms of value because i can go ahead and i can create a filter okay that you know pro pro probability is equal to or greater than three okay and then i will have a filter for all the deals with probability closure that it's equal that it's equal or higher than three so having the data visible in in a visual way does not uh, take away any feature or filtering or formula or data processing feature um, away from us 
right and of course I can always go ahead from here and you know just remove the filter and then I will be able to see all the information once again so lastly in the task table I want to introduce two uh, additional columns type one is the done um, column so the done column is basically a checkbox you can refer to this as a yes or no uh, when a checkbox is toggled on or off so a checkbox column has the default value or checked or not checked now if you're tracking when a task is done or not of course it makes sense to have the default type as not checked because when we add a task of course it's opened and then if I want to mark task as done all I have to do is just click here and this task is marked as done and of course I can go ahead and unmark it okay and the next one is team lead so a team lead is a single collaborator um, type of column okay so we have the option to, to have a single collaborator or a multi collaborator so for tasks and it's uh, you know come it comes from uh, project management best practices it's always better to have only a single collaborator because the concept says if you have multiple assign assignees for a task then no one is responsible for it but for a team lead with a single collaborator basically you have the option to choose a collaborator from everyone who has access to the specific stack so if you invite people okay through the share option you have the option to share with colleagues and friends and invite them to work with you on your stack once they accept the uh, the invitation and we'll talk about this um, again in, in future lessons in this course but once they accept the invitation and they are um, listed as part of the stack collaborators then it's possible for you to choose them here from the list so you always know who is the a collaborator who is responsible for um, delivering a task okay the last two columns that I would like to introduce is created and modified so if I scroll all the way down here then you see that we have created time and updated time so if I add a created time and I will include the time field in 24 hours format okay and we'll call this created so stack by will automatically show us when the uh, the specific row was created and when if I will go here and I will add another row to the stack another task then it's automatically pre-filled okay with information and the next column type is modified so go to updated time and I will call this last modified and again I will include the time and then stack by will automatically track every time this row is modified okay and will and this column will be updated automatically and this can be very useful uh, if you want to add for example um, a column with a formula that tracks the amount of time in either hours minutes or days that it, it took to close down or to fulfill each and every task and it provides um, really wide range for, for reporting options from you know who is the team lead who is the responsible how long does it take him to complete task on average and so on and so forth so we will get more to formulas in in future lessons but i just wanted to know that it is possible to have both created and last modified automatically tracked by stack by and then run calculations and formulas and really deep dive into reporting so for example if i will go here it's been a while since i last updated the row and as you can see stack by automatically updated the last modify with the time and date of which I updated the row for the last time okay and then I, there's automatically a gap between or time tracking between the created and last modified so this was really in a nutshell an introduction to the different column types that stack by allows you to have and use in the system 
I really encourage you to go to uh, your Stankbot database. And it doesn't matter if it's, it's one that you already use or if you create a new one specifically for testing. Click on add a new column and just explore the different column types and features and options that are available to you. For example, um, you can also have an attachment field that we did not cover in this lesson. So attachment field allows you to add documents uh, directly to the stack, to the database for ease of access. For example, contracts with uh, uh, that related to a deal or documents that related to a task and so on and so forth. So the purpose of this lesson was just to you know give you from a high level perspective really to encourage you to go and explore for yourself what's possible so you can you know really feel that get your heads dirty a little bit with the system and feel with your own um, with your own data and information what's possible in the next lesson I want to talk to you and I'm going to talk to you about how to properly structure your database in terms of uh, uh, tables that are linked to each other and columns that are linked to each other. So th the whole purpose here is to keep important information only once and to avoid duplicates and to allow you to uh, save critical information in a way that if you need to update it in the future, you will only need to update it once. So this is what we will do in the next lesson because it is so important so I wanted to give this, uh, I wanted to, you to have the basics of data entry in StackBy before we go into the more complex start of structuring different tables together. Really hope to see you in the next lesson. Hey, it's Yasaf. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment. And remember to hit that subscribe button so I can let you know every time I publish a new video.